Today, we're going to make royal text in Affinity Designer. To begin the tutorial, we'll use the text tool to make a text box and then type the word royal. Then I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate the text box and then type the word signage. You can make your text say whatever you want, but I'm having mine say Royal Signage because that's the name of the font I'll be using today. Having the right font can make or break a design, which is why I'm excited that Heritage Fonts has decided to partner with us and offer all Affinity Revolution subscribers 10% off their Vintage Font Bundle. The bundle comes with six beautiful fonts and hundreds of vector ornaments. The Royal Signage font is included in the bundle, as well as the ornaments we'll be using today. The bundle is currently 70% off, but you can use the code AFFINITYREVOLUTION to get an extra 10% off. For now though, I'll select both text boxes and change the font to Royal Signage. The text already looks great, but I think we could tweak it to make it look even better. To do so, we'll get out the Glyph Browser, which gives us extra character options. This panel gives us access to every character a font has. Most free fonts don't have many options in the Glyph Browser, but premium fonts like Royal Signage usually have multiple options for each letter of the alphabet. To add a glyph, you just need to begin typing in a text box and then double click on a glyph. Go ahead and try a few glyphs to find the ones that are right for your design. After you're done adding glyphs, you can close the Glyph Browser. Next, let's give our text some color. If you'd like to use the same colors as me, I've included a download link for my swatches in the video description. After downloading the file, you can import the colors from the Swatches panel. Using the imported swatches, I'll give both of my text boxes this nice orangish tan color. Next, we'll give our text an inner stroke effect. To do this, we'll first give the text a white stroke. Then we'll come to our layer effects and give the text an outline that's the same color as the text. By using the stroke panel and an outline effect, we can create this fun inner stroke effect. I'll zoom back out by pressing Command or Control Zero. Next, we're going to give our text a 3D appearance. To do so, we'll get out the Move tool and then select the Royal text box. We'll duplicate the text box by pressing Command or Control J and then change its fill color to brown. Then we'll remove its stroke and its outline effect. Now we'll place this duplicate copy underneath the original text box. From here, we're going to move the duplicate copy just ever so slightly down and to the right. To do this, we can use the arrow keys on our keyboard, which moves the layer one pixel at a time. I'll move this layer one pixel down, and then one pixel to the right. 
Then, if we continue this process of duplicating the text box and moving the duplicate copy one pixel down and to the right, eventually, we'll build up our 3D effect. The more duplicate copies you make, the more prominent your 3D effect will be. I think that's looking thick enough, but now I want to add another layer to the 3D effect using a different color. To do this, I'll duplicate the text layer I have selected and then change its fill color to our third swatch. Then we'll need to move this text box to the bottom of our layers. Now we can move it a little down and to the right. Then we just need to continue duplicating the text box and moving it down and to the right just as we did before. Once you're satisfied with the 3D effect, you can select all of these layers and group them by pressing Command or Control G. Now we'll repeat the whole process for the signage text box to give it the same 3D effect. Now that the 3D effect is looking good, we can reposition our text. If you don't have these red and green guidelines appear, make sure you have snapping turned on at the top. Then we can group the two text layers to keep everything nice and organized. Now that we're done with our text, we're going to work on adding extra design elements to our royal text. First, I'm going to open the frames and single elements files that come with the vintage font bundle. It's nice that both of these are Affinity Designer files because most ornaments for sale online are only made for Adobe Illustrator, so it's nice to have some that are designed for Affinity. Inside the Elements file, you can see that we have a lot of elements to choose from. I've already looked through them and found one that I like, but feel free to use a different element than me. To bring an element into your main design, all you need to do is copy and paste. I'll also change its color to match the text. This element would look better if it were longer, but if I just stretch it, it doesn't look very good. Instead, we need to use the Node tool. Using this tool, we can click and drag to select these nodes, and then move them to the left with the arrow key. And if you hold down shift, the arrow key will move the nodes by 10 pixels instead of one, allowing you to move them much more quickly. Then you can use the move tool to reposition the element. And feel free to get the node tool back out if its length needs more finessing. Right now, the element is going right over our text. It would look better if the element has gaps in it to make room for the text. Fortunately, this is actually a lot easier to do than you might think. First, make a rectangle. Then, select the rectangle and the element, and use the subtract operation. Perfect! Now we can use the node tool to move these nodes to make the gap exactly the right size. Then we can repeat the process to make another gap for the G. Once your element is looking good, go ahead and group it with the text so that we can easily move everything around at the same time. Next, it's time to add a border to our design. This will be easy to do since we have some beautiful borders that were included in the Vintage Font Bundle. I like how this flower frame looks, so I'm going to bring it over to our main design, and then resize and position everything so that it fits in our document. I think that looks pretty good, but it still looks a little empty to me. 
So I'm going to bring over a second frame and then resize and position everything. That looks great. I think we're really close to being done. To wrap up this project, I just want to add a little bit of color and texture. To add a colored background, I'll use one of the images that comes with the vintage font bundle. To put it into our design, I'll go to File, Place, and then place the blue paper texture. Then I'll move it to the bottom of our layers. Perfect! That blue looks so good with our design. Next, I'll place another paper texture and bring it to the top of our layers. Then I'll change the blend mode to multiply. That's added a little bit of texture, but we can duplicate this layer to add even more texturing. I think that texturing looks really good. But now our design is a little dark, so let's add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer to brighten it up. Just remember to place your adjustment at the top of your layer stack, or else it won't brighten your entire design. Much better. Well, thanks for watching, my friends. And I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.